Horn Online Training, Training Module 2.1, Mini Introduction. I'm your trainer, Edwin Tunney, Training and Technical Specialist for Horn USA. This is part two um, of the Mini Introduction Training, dealing with application. The Mini System is a very straightforward system and easy to use, uh, but hopefully over the next few slides, you'll see uh, a few application tips uh, to help you get the most out of the system. So first, talk about machine condition. Uh, so the Mini is um, can tolerate some uh, poor alignment of, of the machine, uh, but really the best is to have the machine aligned within uh, one thousandths, uh, at least on the cutting height. Make sure that your tightening torque, use torque limiting, uh, on all of these uh, inserts to make sure that you're getting the proper uh, torque to the insert. Use the light, use the largest diameter and the shortest length uh, possible. So um, what that means is, yes, you want rigidity uh, of your tool. So obviously you want the biggest neck diameter you can fit in there. Uh, but just realize with small bore turning, you also uh, have to pay attention to your chips and your chips have to evacuate from, from the bore uh, so you don't recut chips and, and damage your insert. Asymmetric inserts, uh, those, uh, those are the 11P, uh, the, the 106, the 107, the 11P, the, eight, the 18P inserts, uh, those are asymmetric. Uh, so as we learn from part one, there are asymmetric and symmetric inserts, but the asymmetric inserts, right-hand inserts fit with right-hand holders and left inserts with left holders. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Use the proper hardware. Uh, don't replace these screws with another version, um, uh, one that's laying around in the drawer. Uh, clean the interface. Um, and really the interface here the insert locks into these lugs. It really shouldn't, it shouldn't be making contact with that surface. So pay special attention to these lugs that everything is clean and everything's clean on the insert as well. When this is fully assembled at the proper torque, there should be an interference, uh, an interface gap between the, the back of the insert and this little face up front. You'll notice this is not a flat surface, it's kind of a, a dish. There should be about a 4,000 gap there. It's, it's not a mistake if you do, uh, if you have that gap, it's actually uh, seating correctly. So the, the insert itself should seat on these lugs and not on the, the face you see here. It should seat in the lugs and not on that face. Some other things uh, to help um, to be successful with the mini uh, system is uh, to know, uh, you know what questions to ask. Uh, these are the questions that if you consult with tech or technical team, they're gonna ask you. Uh, so thought it'd be better to preemptively give you those uh, sort of questions. So material and condition, uh, those are very important. Um, do you have a heat treated uh, condition? Is it annealed? Um, what is the, the background behind uh, the material? So the spec and condition. The minimum bore diameter, which is the D-min. So the D-min is your minimum bore, um, the distance here to here. So can my tool actually fit in the part? The length into the part, so the L2 value, so where uh, the L2 is given usually to the furthest point to the front of your part. So can I reach uh, the feature of uh, the groove or whatever feature it is uh, with the length of holder I have? The depth of groove. So how deep is my groove? Are there corner radii requirements for the groove? So what does this radius need to be? Uh, the width. Obviously, if you're doing a groove, you need to know what the width is. Tolerance, bore, contour, interrupted cuts, any kind of handing. So how is this oriented in the machine? Um, as we know from small bore turning, 
there's a lot of different configurations of machines, uh, screw machines, transfer, um, rotary transfer machines, Swiss machines. So what hand of tool is needed uh, for that application? Next, we'll talk about um, speeds. So uh, speed is a grade related uh, parameter. Uh, it's related to the grade and the, and the coating. Uh, so you'll find that the Super Mini and Mini, uh, since they share grades, which we'll talk about uh, in a little while, uh, they also share cutting conditions, uh, specifically speed. Feed conditions are a little different, but uh, speed-wise, uh, they share that condition. One thing I really want to point out and stress is that the cutting speeds you see uh, in the technical documentation the reason you have the, the low number here, the 46 surface feet, uh, which is a uh, ridiculously low uh, surface footage, the reason that number is so low is not a mistake. It's actually taking into account uh, that you have a, um, an 8,000 RPM machine and you're trying to machine, uh, let's say a 20,000 uh, diameter part. Uh, so the actual achievable speed is down there uh, in that range. Best case scenario uh, for both Super Mini and Mini, uh, but since we're talking about the Mini, is to take the top end speed. So for instance, um, the TH35 here grade, 590 SFM is the top end. Uh, so just take 60% of that or multiply by 0.6 and that gives you a, a good starting value. Again, uh, you don't want to run, you don't want to run speed that are speeds that are too low, uh, because then you get a buildup on the on the cutting edge. So just take the top end, multiply it by 0.6, and use that as your starting point. So <clears throat> you'll find this technical documentation um, in our catalog with the different ISO material groups like steel, stainless, iron. Uh, heat resistant alloys like titanium, non-ferrous alloys, and hard materials. So um, from cutting speed, then we go to feed. So the feed parameters are, are pretty uh, basic and straightforward for grooving, four tenths to one thou two tenths. Um, and these are meant to be a guidance. Uh, sometimes you can go a little bit um, more aggressive with these parameters, but just as a, a general kind of guideline, grooving four tenths to one thou two tenths, profiling one thou two tenths to four thousandths, and face grooving eight tenths to three tenths or th uh, three thousandths. Sorry. So you can see the direction um, because in grooving you're going perpendicular uh, to the the axis of the tool. Uh, is a lower, is a little bit lower parameter. Profiling, you're more or less pushing back on the axis of the tool, so you can go a little bit more aggressively. Face grooving, you're also pushing uh, back on the axis um, of the tool as well, uh, but you typically um, are constrained um, inside that, inside the part. Uh, you have a lot of contact area, so just a slight uh, reduction in the feed per rev. Also think about uh, your geometries. Um, they do have limits. We'll go over these uh, again. You'll see this information again in the application training at the end of this series of small bore trainings. Uh, but on the R geometry, you can sort of go from 0.8 uh, millimeter or 31 thousandths uh, and take a, all the way up to a depth of 2.6 or 100 thousandths. Be careful on the backside of the insert, the T-Max, if you're um, not boring, but you're profiling. So profiling meaning you're changing uh, position uh, from the center line of your component. Um, so you do have uh, some clearance on the backside of this to do profiling. Uh, but it is uh, more limited than the depth of cut on the front end. So, for instance, uh, if you have uh, this tool here, the 1859R2, 
the the front side you can bore up to a millimeter or 39 thousandths deep, but on the back side you only have a clearance of six thousandths. So that's where the tool is guaranteed to be uh, cleared on on the back end. So that means you would only be able to increase your diameter by six thousandths per pass um, when you're uh, when you're running in a profiling operation. So just always be aware of that that you're clearing the back of the tool as well. Same with uh, the D2 geometry. So we just talked about the R2 geometry. Now the uh, D2, um, the D2 geometry is also capable of doing uh, profiling, uh, albeit it's not specifically designed for that. Uh, for it's a grooving tool, uh, but it its uh, secondary function is a uh, is side turning. So in side turning, uh, you can go from all the way up to uh, sort of three millimeter um, or 118 thousandths of an inch. Uh, so always pay attention to these limits that you're, you don't exceed the, the chip breaker or the clearance on the, on the insert. All right, the last section here is uh, on horn grades. Uh, so this sort of covers Super Mini and Mini, but we'll talk about specific grades uh, for the Mini as well. The first two letters of the grade designation are really horn internal and specific. I think at one time uh, you had sort of T meant a tin coated and H was something, um, but I would be, I would not focus on that too much. Uh, focus uh, not on those two characters, focus on the last two. Uh, so the last two characters here or uh, places are the approximate thickness and the substrate. So the approximate thickness in microns, uh, most of the time with the mini, uh, the super mini system, you'll see that a two or a three thickness. Um, with the mini, you can get some thicker uh, versions the um, EG55, for example, is uh, five micron approximate thickness. And then the substrate is a five substrate. So a five substrate, uh, the key is here. So a P20 is a two substrate, a P40 is three, MG15 is G, MG12 is five, K10 is six, KO5 is seven. Um, most of the the mini system uh, you'll find are either a five substrate, which is MG12, or uh, there's a few that are a K10 or um, a six substrate, uh, and then a few maybe that are a, uh, a P20 or a two. Uh, beyond that, you won't see, uh, you won't see too, too much in the mini system outside of that. So most are the MG12, um, and then there's a few uh, K10s, I think, in the, in the program. MG12, it, and just to give you a difference, MG12 is a tough carbide, a uh, very fine gray carbide. Uh, the P20 is sort of tough. The P40 is, is tough, uh, P being the ISO P or steel group. And then the K is in the iron group, so K10 is a, is a relatively hard uh, substrate. Um, and then KO5 is a little, even a little harder substrate than that. Um, you also have coated servets as well, and those are an eight. So um, just to focus in on some of the coating systems that are offered, um, TN, uh, TN35 is offered uh, in the Mini. Uh, you'll find that uh, quite frequently. And that's a titanium nitride coating. It's more or less uh, a secondary choice for steel and for non-ferrous. TH35 is also um, available, and that's for steel, secondarily stainless and iron. EG3 uh, is a super mini uh, grade. Uh, not typically offered on the on the mini system, uh, but EG55 is a is a mini a newer uh, mini grade, 
four steels, uh, stainless and iron. It's a aluminum titanium nitride with a tin flash, um, a yellow tin flash layer on the top. It's also one of the more, um, it's a newer coating, so it has advanced processing, uh, like high PIMS uh, processing um, for better coating density. ES1, uh, HS, TI2, DD2, and NE2 are also uh, coatings that are available. Uh, these are not uh, available as a, a standard, uh, but I think uh, you might find a few with HS36 uh, for hard uh, machining, and that's aluminum, titanium, silica nitride, uh, and then some DD2s, uh, titanium diboride for aluminum or non-ferrous machining. Lastly, um, you have the ultra hards. Uh, so we have an entire uh, catalog of ultra hard uh, tipped tools. Um, and the mini is also uh, one section of that, of that, um, one section of that uh, catalog. So you have a CB10, which is uh, for hard steels greater than 56 Rockwell. Uh, so this is cubic boron nitride. You also have PD75, and that is polycrystalline diamond um, MD10, which is a high polish uh, for high polish machining. And that's also a monocrystalline, so it's a monocrystalline diamond instead of a polycrystalline. Uh, the MD10, there are some standard, uh, standard offerings uh, for extremely high polish machining. Uh, so, um, acrylics, um, pure alloys, uh, all non-ferrous stuff. You, you don't ever want to use this on a, on a steel or anything that contains iron. It's uh, mainly non-ferrous alloys in the ISO N group. And then HDO3, which is CVD-D, and that's a, a very high purity diamond that is uh, produced using chemical vapor deposition. Um, and it's 90, I think it's 99.5% uh, pure. Um, the HDO3, the O3 just means the wafer thickness. So this doesn't have any sort of a coating on it. Uh, it just has a, a wafer thickness of 300 microns. So all options um, that you can have uh, for um, tipped tools within the mini system. All right, thanks. Um, that's all. That's part one and part two complete. Uh, join us uh, for our live trainings um, through invitation or check back at this YouTube channel uh, at Horn USA um, Inc. Uh, for future trainings. Thanks and have a great day.